So if you had told me when I was a kid that I would today be in southern China painting using Chinese ink on canvas and uh, exhibiting in Hong Kong, uh, in the United States, painting walls, uh, going to live events in different cities in China, if I was just painting on the rooftop of schools for a school fashion show, giving workshops like the one I'm giving today, I wouldn't have believed you. And this leads me to this question that I think every single person in this room has heard or been asked or has asked someone at some point. And I don't really know why we ask this question. First of all, it assumes that we're going to be one thing when we grow up. Number two, it puts a lot of pressure on kids, especially as they get older. They feel that I should know what I'm doing. I should know where I'm going. And number three, I don't actually think people grow up. I think people fake being an adult until they forget what it was like to be a kid. <laughs> Except for this guy. This guy is a very good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Patch Adams. If you don't know who he is, he is a clown, but he's also a physician. He's an author. He is a humanitarian. And he's also what I call a life bender. When I was 22 years old, I was in an existential crisis because of that question. So when I was able to sit down with him and have some tea in his home, because he luckily lived two blocks away from me, I was very, very lucky, that was the first thing I asked him. Please help me answer this question. And you know what he said to me? He said, Rebecca, you don't need to know what you're going to be later in life. You just need to focus on what you want to do right now. And I can tell you, I felt immediate relief. And that's exactly what I've done since then. So in 2015, when I was a teacher at SIS, and I had been a teacher for seven years and enjoyed every single moment of it, I had three months of vacation a year, I was traveling, I had an amazing students to teach and coworkers. I had it all, it seemed, right? So when I decided that that was going to be one of my last years at the school, people were really confused. A lot of questions were asked in different ways, but the main one was, why? Why would I do that? And I'm here to tell you why. Because I'm a life bender. Life benders have meaningful goals that give them a sense of purpose, no matter what they're doing. And in this case, people who knew me knew that over the course of the previous few years, which I'll explain, I had begun developing new goals that were beyond my teaching. It started in my living room. I turned my bare walls into a de facto studio, and I started asking myself, what did I want to do that weekend or that month for that month? How many pieces of art did I want to make? And eventually, my goals started growing in size. Jordan Peterson says the lifting, most people find what's sustainable in their life is the lifting of a worthwhile burden. And for you younger kids, that simply just means find problems that you find worth solving and do them. And then as a result, you'll probably feel a little bit happy. So I started traveling and actually just painting whatever came to mind. The second thing that I find especially uh, valuable as a life bender, and I've seen it in all the people that have inspired me, is that their number one complaint, actually, all the time is there's not enough time. There's not enough time. We've got to do more. And so one of the things is they live with a sense of urgency. Most life benders I know can get done in a day what normally many people don't even get done in a week. I also reflect a lot. I journal. I carry things with me, and I think about them all the time. I'm processing what I'm doing, where I'm at, and how much farther I need to go. And that's one of the things that got me to this point of changing my career. Another trait, which a lot of people who know me personally know that I have a lot of this, it's a having a why not personality. Why not? Why not go and get on a clown, a bus, a, a, a bus full of clowns? Why, why should I go out on, in a weekend when I have reports due and paint a wall? Well, why not? But actually, my mantra is a little bit different. I said, I always used to say, flick it, and actually, I still do all the time. It's kind of like the Nike ad, but a lot cooler, as you can see. 
So when I didn't have a ladder or the weather was bad or I just wasn't feeling up to it, I just said, ah, just flick it, just go. Just go ahead and do it. I actually started painting it. It was my second tag name. And the fourth trait that all lifebenders have is optimism. And I'm not saying that that's a kind of optimism where you're just like, everything is great all the time. It's actually a way of looking at things that no matter what is going on, especially when it's hard, that there is and can be a solution. So one thing that helps me keep that kind of attitude is staying grateful and appreciating the things and the moments, both good and bad, that have brought me to this one and the people in my life and the places that I've been. I had a group of students my last year of teaching that gave me this beautiful reminder of that sometimes the best things you can do for, your, for yourself take a lot of courage. This group of students came to me in my first self-organized solo show at a local cafe here in Chaco, and they believed in me actually more than I did. I'm sure you've heard the expression, fake it till you make it. Well, I was definitely faking it, okay? And one of these students came up to me and gushingly said, oh my gosh, Ms. O'Brien, you're going to be famous! <laughs> and while I'm definitely not famous, I can say two and a half years later, I've come a long way. And that's actually what is making me excited about the next few years to come, just to see my progress. So today, do something that your future self will thank you for. I, today, am the future self of that woman in 2015 that decided I'm going to try something new. I'm moving towards new opportunities, towards the challenges that will be coming, and I'm moving away from things that scare me. Fifth trait that I think everybody in, uh, who is doing something that's meaningful to them is they're constantly learning. They're seeking new knowledge. They're asking questions, and especially asking help. When I didn't know how to do something when I first started out, I was always asking my friends, my colleagues, for help, their opinions. I also have right now a really important person in my life who's a mentor, and I think everyone should have one. And this mentor is already 25, 30 years in the street art ga game. He's a French street artist named C.T. He gives me advice. He tells me things I don't want to hear. He pushes me all the time, and he tells me the truth. I trust him. I also have the privilege right now of working with some of the top players in the street art game in this world. And I get to see them work in the studio, I get to ask them questions at dinner, and I get to have role models. Of course, my number one fan, shout out to her, she is my mom, 33 years following this account, and she always takes the time to clip out news articles, so when I come home, I be, I'm definitely reading all of them. And the last trait, but not the least, most, the least important, is grit. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's kind of like stick to itness. It just basically means you need to persist, you need to push, you need to have patience, you need to enjoy challenges because they're going to come whether you want them to or not, and you need to keep going. Like nobody told me how hard it was going to be going from a place where I had my schedule laid out for me to becoming my own parent and getting up at a certain time, making plans, doing certain things, especially when I didn't feel like it or I had really easy distractions lying around. Another thing nobody told me was how lonely and quiet it was in my studio and how many hours I would have to sit there by myself to make my work. But don't just sit there. Do something today. The rest will follow. Today and every day, I look down at my hands, and if they're dirty, I know I had done something today. And I encourage you to think of something that you do, can do every day that reminds you that you did something for yourself. If there is an idea worth sharing today, for me, it's this. Life is meant to be bent. It's bent, it's the opportunities that come when you are able to bend your time towards meaningful goals, when you're able to bend your attitude in the face of a lot of challenges. And if anyone asks you that question, which I think is another thing I think we should stop doing, just tell them you want to be a life bender. What you do in your job or where you go and everything like that, the rest will work itself out. Thank you very much.